Okay, so I gotta be honest. I'm not gonna be a hater. Like, yo, if a chapter shit is shit, if a chapter is dope, is dope. I, I gotta, you know, I gotta be real. I'm a reviewer. That's what I do. So, this week's chapter of Fairy Tale, we had quite a few different things. I personally thought the ending was pretty dope. I, I think always it's dope, usually anyway, when we got Gray. When Gray is doing some moves, making some big moves, that's when you know shit is about to get hype and. This week's chapter of Fairy Tale, Gray, Gray did some awesome shit at the end. Well, he started some awesome shit and some interesting things, although I, I, I fear for his future. But let, let's jump into it. So beginning of the chapter is once again trying to cement the fact that indeed Makarov is dead. You got Lox is holding his dead body there. I'm still going to be a skeptic, even though we got the dead body right there, but you never know with Fairy Tale. We've seen some shit before. Maybe we'll get some time reversal. You never know, but it seems to be, once again, Hero is trying to cement it. We've had all these moments leading up until this that Makara was stone. Now, you know, he's in Loxus's arms, basically dead there. So, hopefully, he stays that way, but you never know what fairy tale. But either way, it was good to see once again. It just shows how much Loxus has grown as a character. I mean, from the start, when he started off as a piece of shit asshole, beating up everyone in fairy tale, saying, I don't want no weaklings. And what you see him doing now and his relationship with Mock Rob, even though Mock Rob dead now, nevertheless, it showcases the development and the growth for Loxus. So, good scene there. And overall, again, it seems as though Hero's trying to drive in that Mock Rob is indeed dead, but the jury is still out on that one. It's not completely. You know, I'm still going to say, mm, you never know. It's Hero. And how many times have these Spriggan gotten up at this point? It's like, holy shit. I think we've been in this arc since 2015, which, you know, fine, long arc, whatever. But uh, we got the fucking uh, Jake, I think his name is. That dude is still there. He got back up, I guess, after Natsu blew him away on some Team Rocket shit. He's there fighting against Mita Jane. Terrible opponent. And I think the reason why he was getting, you know, why he got his ass kicked against Natsu was because Lucy was there. And then now he's fighting a, a bad opponent, too, because he can't see tits. He can't see women in general because he's like, oh, cover yourself up. So terrible opponent yet again. But it was just like, why are they getting back up if they're just going to get bodied again by other fairy tale members? So I was a little bit like, oh. Okay, we, we still got some of the Spriggan lingering around there like, yo, we're still trying to make moves. But in reality, like, y'all seen what happened, right? Yeah, y'all didn't get a dose the first, second, third, and however many times y'all got your asses kicked. I mean, I guess Jake only got his ass kicked once and then went flying away on some Team Rocket shit. But nevertheless, it was like, uh, I, I guess it's cool to see more of the fairy tale members doing some shit. But in reality, it's like the Spriggan. Mm. Okay, whatever. And then I'm not gonna lie, I kind of cringe a little bit when you see Ajil's grandpa begging for his grandson's life. I'm like, damn, y'all that defeated that y'all y'all begging fairy tale at this point. I was like, I guess it's showcasing that little by little because if these guys just keep getting back up, keep getting healed, keep you know coming at them, this is never gonna fucking end. So the fact that the grandpa is stepping in and saying, yo, like just spare my grandson's life, let's just stop all this. You know, we've lost enough. Unless he's being a little slick motherfucker and he's actually really strong on some. Crazy plot twist. He's the Zero Spriggan or some crazy shit like, or the 13th Spriggan. They would just call the Spriggan 12 for no reason. They're the 13th or whatever. Like, it seems as though that's the best way to kind of stop these people from continuing on. Because if Ajil gets another breath of wind, he's going to just get back up and keep fighting. So him jumping in there, it's, it kind of made me cringe again to see like, you're begging for his life. But at the same time, I guess that's the best way Hero can finally put a stop to some of these fights. Because these people, they're not going to stop. They're going to keep on going. So the fact that he's there all fucked up to begin with then his grandpa saying yo listen or whatever but I, I just gotta say one thing it felt random out of place and maybe it's just because it's a Japanese thing or something but I didn't understand what was Ajil's confusion and if there was supposed to be a joke there or something about Elfman and Lisana being brother and sister I was kind of like why is he like oh you're nothing alike I guess that was supposed to be the joke if so that was a really badly timed and just corny joke I, I didn't feel like it was placed well at all it was like wait uh your 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 brother and sister what i'm like yeah okay so like i, I don't know that that felt a little bit like well, what was the point of that i guess it was just like he was shocked to see a brother and sister in war and that they're nothing alike but yeah, mm. I really wish Brandish would have just picked a side at this point, but I guess it kind of breaks away from the mold of like, ah, oh, yes, she's been changed. She's going to rock with fairy tale from now on, and she's continuing on. I don't give a fuck about either side of the war. I'm just doing my own thing. She took Demaria with her because, you know, Demaria ain't going to stop either. So I guess that's another solution that Hero has to the problem with a lot of these freaking 12 because a lot of them were just like, we don't give a fuck. We're fighting to the death. We don't care, and it's kind of hard to take them out, especially Demaria with her time powers. It's like, how do you stop this? 
So I think that's his answer to kind of putting people down like Ajil using the grandpa situation and then Brandis just having her in a fucking vice grip and walking around with her is like, well, that's how you get rid of the Demaria problem as well. But I guess it would have been kind of better in a way to have Brandis just pick a fucking side or something. But I imagine towards the end of this arc, her jumping in one more time to help with something, maybe using her magic. I don't think it's going to be the complete end of her. But I guess it's good in a way that overall heroes like, hey, trying something a little bit different than the typical like, ah, oh, once a villain, now on the good side. So good shit on that regard. It's just kind of like, well, why is she lingering around then? Like just, okay, she had Demaria bounce. Like, yeah, let's move on from that. And from the moment Grey was missing, I kind of, I think we all could make a pretty good guess where he was going because he had that grudge against E and D and that was kind of resolved when he was having that fight with Natsu and Erza jumped in so it's like he's not going after E and D anymore he's gonna go against the catalyst the source of it all even though are you are you out, out of your fucking mind bro like really like yeah so, but when it was showcased that oh where is Gray where did he go it was kind of like yeah I think we all kind of knew and August 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 like yeah I, I will say that he has the best opponent at the very least to make this fight not completely go downhill because it's a great setup and I'm really excited about that fight but we all know where a lot of these or majority of this fight has been going but at the very least if August loses to Guild Arts if it's in a decent way it'll be fine because Guild Arts has been known to be one of the strongest from Fairy Tale, right so if you lose to Guild Arts it ain't that bad and especially when he jumped in I was like yes Guild Arts is back I, I was actually excited for that and overall again that's why I really enjoyed this chapter of Fairy Tale and I thought it was a lot better than the past two or three chapters we've had so Guild Arts showing up again it's like well where has he been this entire time probably just checking out booty because that's what Guild Arts does but nevertheless that's a good fight but August man especially when he was just like I'm gonna kill everything in sight you know I need all this energy I'm like damn so August really don't give a fuck but Guild Arts jumping in I'm not mad at it I think it's a lot better than one of these young whippersnappers like if you know Natsu said oh, I'm, I'm gonna take out August right now I would have been like Huh? But since his guild darts is like he's a veteran, he's one of the strongest, even if August loses to him, as long as it's in a decent way, I think majority of the fandom will be okay with it. I mean, that's just my assumption. I mean, personally, me, I'm fine with it, and I hope that they actually show it and show guild arts going down, especially seemingly with this being the final arc of Fairy Tale, even though it hasn't been really announced. But nevertheless, if this is the final arc of Fairy Tale, I want to see guild arts go all out, especially with August, one of the strongest opponents he's ever fought, aside from Acnologia. Let's see some good shit from that, but even keeping your fingers crossed is fairy tale. And then the ending, as I've been talking about throughout this video, Gray showing up against Zeroth. I'm thinking to myself, well, I guess a lot of this has to do with what Gray has ultimately become in these past few years of fairy tale, where it's just kind of he's been driven ever since I think the fight with his father, especially, and finding out more about E and D and all of that. It's like this is what Gray's character has kind of become. He's more so driven by he wants to get rid of the root of all this problem and the thing that kind of caused him misery to begin with, which makes a lot more sense than him being mad at END because okay you're gonna be mad at END first of all END is Natsu and Natsu can't even control that so why would you be mad at him when you should be mad at the person responsible for everything these are the demons from Zeroth's book so if anything he should have always been mad at Zeroth to begin with so the fact that he's actually going against Zeroth is like this should have been your target all along, buddy. Although, right now, you're injured as fuck. You just had that crazy fight against Natsu in his semi-END form. Yeah, um, you're, you're about to get bodied. I mean, it's just bad when even Zeroth was like, uh, yeah, Natsu, I'm sorry for what I'm about to do right now. Like, <laughs> yeah, they, they better get there quick. But I'd imagine what's gonna happen is when we get there, Natsu and all of them show up. Maybe Gray's gonna be there, knock the fuck out on the floor. I don't think Zeroth is gonna kill him just because, again, he cares so much about Natsu. And it, it, as long as he stays in that normal Zeroth mindset, not that freakazoid that wants to just blow everything up and kill everybody, I think Gray will be, you know, just kind of like fucked up when not so them get there. I don't think he's gonna be dead. I mean, I just don't it's fairy tale. But as a whole, dope chapter. I want to say 7.5 to an 8. I can't believe I actually saying that. It's been so long since I've been able to give fairy tale a pretty dope score like that. But it was actually a very good chapter. The setup will get, you know what? We, we're giving it the 8. It deserves it. I don't want to be a hater. I'm gonna be, you know, straight up objective. It was an 8. It was a very good chapter. Very good setup with Guild Arts versus August. I'm looking forward to seeing that fight going down. I mean, 
We'll, we'll see what the outcome is, but at the very least, it's some worthy opponents. Also, the ending, the setup with Gray showing up against Zerub is like, I don't know what Gray's gonna do, but he's finally on point on what he should be doing. Also, I guess getting rid of the remnants of the Spriggan 12, knowing that, yeah, a lot of them aren't gonna come back for any more revenge. Ajil's grandpa stepping in, Brandish holding Demaria, Brandish going off. So, getting rid of those problems as well, which is gonna more so wrap up this arc pretty quickly. But I'm kind of curious for you guys' opinion. What do you think? Do you think that this is actually gonna be a decent fight? Guild Arts versus August. You think that's a fair matchup? You think Hero can actually do some good with this? I mean, have we ever had a really bad Guild Arts fight? I mean, Guild Arts usually when he throws down is pretty decent, so hopefully that'll be the case with this one. It's like Hero always does pretty dope fights for people like Wendy. Wendy always gets really dope fights and Guild Arts and, and a couple other people, but hopefully again he, that sticks with this one as well. Also, what do you think about this Gray one? Do you think Zerub's gonna kill Gray? He's not gonna kill Gray, but do you think Zerub's gonna kill Gray? And yeah, uh, yeah. Your, your thoughts and speculation on that either way it was a cool ending nice cliffhanger and i'm looking forward to the next chapter hopefully it stays on course with what this chapter was which is a very good chapter 8 out of 10 but that's all i have for this one thanks for watching hope you enjoyed if you liked anything i had to say or enjoyed the video drop me a like i'd greatly appreciate it and if you want more from me make sure to subscribe follow me on twitter instagram and stalk my facebook to get more when the video ends i'm for world and as always people have an awesome day mm -hmm.